I am uh, Tom Browning. I'm a co-owner of Browning Honey Company. We are in Blackfoot, Idaho at our storage facility for the bees in the winter. It is mid-January. It's about 24 degrees outside today and we are shipping bees to California. Typically there's about 408 hives on a truck and in our operation that means we're going to ship about 60 to 65 trucks to California for pollination. Um, coming out of the building this year, it looks like we've lost between 12 and 14 percent, which is uh, about average. Yep. Um, we'd love it to be less, but it is what it is with the mites and other things that we deal with. We just have more loss. So. on the screen, the brighter colors mean they're, they're alive and you go to this one, it's all dark. Yeah. So you can tell which one's dead. How often do you find those? It just depends. Maybe one out of 12, maybe, sometimes. No, we don't do any sorting. Um, if we're, like today, we're, we're finishing up, we're sorting now, we don't do any pre-sorting, we just load them and go and pull the dead out. So we usually can keep it 10% or less. On our, and so is what we call out for what we, like if I ship 10,000, I can usually usually put 9,000 in the almonds. And so that's, it's just easier to deal with it down there. If I thought I had 30 or 40%, you might want to start sorting. But realistically, I should know that right now. There's a decision in, in which we look at that hive and decide whether it's actually viable or not. It's not worth it to ship a hive that isn't, isn't going to be able to grow. But a hive that is going to be able to grow might be needed if there's a desperate shortage here for, for bees and the almonds. But more importantly, that's a resource that we want to continue to, to grow if we can. So we'll put them in an area where they're going to have the benefit of early sunshine as compared to the Idaho desert that won't bloom until probably 1st of April. Here we can get them into a warm climate and, and start feeding them and nurturing them back to a more, more healthy state. Another benefit of, of storing the bees in the, in the sheds is getting that broodless period that is a result of 90 days of darkness. It's a good natural varroa control and often it means that we don't have to treat for varroa until maybe May or even June. With this building, you have the temperature controlled, so there's really zero number of days where bees are flying. And so when the bees are flying, that's when they um, go into other hives to rob those colonies or to look for food in other hives, and they carry those kinds of diseases into their neighboring hives when they're stored in large holding yards outdoors, say in California, for example. So these situations where they're stored indoors generally reduces the transmission of diseases or the movement of varroa from one hive to the other. And I think that what we'll find is that the virus transmission is much lower in the buildings in addition to the, the growth of varroa mites. Because the other thing is, like you said, when they're outdoors, a lot of that cost is feeding during the winter. And when you're feeding the bees, they're generating brood. And when you're generating brood, you they produce more mites. And so in the buildings, they do not produce much brood at all, and so the mite numbers aren't growing during the winter, which is an additional you know, health and cost savings for beekeepers. The way we have them laid out, bees from different beekeepers aren't, aren't touching each other. There's spacing between, a lot of that's simply for airflow, but, but the other part of that is because of that. We don't, we don't want any beekeepers to worry about who their neighbor is inside here, and after we're done, filling the buildings. You know, my days are spent uh, watching them online. We've got computer controls so I can, can monitor remotely. But really, the, we, we try and stay out of the buildings. We just leave things alone. We're, we're not in cleaning or doing different things. We've learned that every time we walk in that building, even if it's with our just our little headlamps, it, it disturbs them just a little. 
and when you disturb them, bees fly, and so there's that many less. I don't like to mess around in here when they're full. It's better just to leave them alone. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, but you're just giving stress. I mean, you're gonna, they're gonna break cluster. They're gonna, if you flip, I mean, we don't, I'd flip the breakers. When we get these buildings loaded, we flip the breakers. You can't turn the white lights on. Sometimes I'll even flip the breakers where you can't turn the red lights on. So you, nobody can come in here and turn a light on or anything. So we come in with a flashlight, do a walk through every once in a while, just make sure. Um, but I just don't like messing with them because it seems like if you just leave them alone, they just they don't break cluster. They just stay in there, do their thing. In the middle of December, uh, the California and Idaho State um, their inspectors will show up and we'll go through a bunch of the hives and they'll pre-certify them and they are looking for any signs of noxious weeds, hive beetle. Uh, it's still a pretty new program so uh, not all of our beekeepers are doing that. Mostly that's me uh, trying to select the beekeepers that will pass, <laughs> kind of doing my own pre pre-inspection. We've got seven or eight of them. You know, they've taken the time to get the, the weeds and the dirt and all those things off their pallets, done a good job of, of, of cleaning their equipment for, before it comes in here. Yeah, we didn't do it last year. Um, I was a little concerned um, with doing the pre-inspection because I didn't want to spend a week inside one of these buildings that was loaded with bees and lose the quality. Uh, having said that, I guess they came in relatively fast and, and uh, and inspected them without any issues and so I, I think I am going to have this building inspected this year, pre-inspected. Um, That's a good point. I mean so you know as far as like the best management practices or to call it that you know yeah. that inspection service well, my probably happen maybe during the loading or unloading because like you said it seems to be really important to not disturb exactly once they're set. My concern was is if we have 12,000 hives in this building and we spend two days in here trying to get pre-inspected so we don't get one load hung up at the border. Uh, what did we gain? You know, we screwed up 12,000 hives to gain not having. Now, how if I get one hung up on the border, you know, it's four or 500 hives and it's an inconvenience, but it's not as big of an inconvenience as trying to find 12,000 good hives to make everybody happy. And so that's what I was told that they came in and they're relatively fast and, and looked through them. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and at least probably get this one inspected this year. We had uh, Idaho and California bee inspectors come in December and inspect these bees here on the ground so that they're pre-inspected okay. when they go into California. They, okay. yeah, it's a new program that we started uh, last year. Uh, California and Idaho departments of agriculture are cooperating with each other. I think North Dakota is also cooperating so that we can relieve the congestion at the border. You'll see that when you get down there. There will be loads that are not inspected. They'll be sitting there for a half an hour to two or three hours before they can get inspected. Our drivers will be able to go in with their paperwork, get the paperwork entered into the computer, and they're on their way in about 10 minutes. Over the last three years, we've been experimenting with moving bees back into the sheds following almond pollination. The primary reason is because there are not enough good holding yards for the bees to go to after almonds. We are a tenant of the world that has been created for us, and the bees are too. So they've been moved to this environment that is a monoculture primarily, and there is not enough natural forage available to support the stocking rate of hives that these almond trees demand. So if we didn't take care of them, they would not be able to take care of themselves. There's just a few little places left, but they're crowded now. I mean, yeah, where we used to run bees in North Dakota, I mean, you used to put 32 hives in a yard and there wouldn't be another yard for two miles. Well, now there's 64 hives in the yard and there's somebody across the street's got 64 and then there's somebody over here's got 128. I mean, there's bees all over. And the same thing in this valley, same thing in California. There's no place to run. I mean, there's no place to hide. There's just a lot of bees and there's just not enough forage for them.